I was having a recurring dream. I didn't really realize what was happening to me. I see a trailer park. Where are you? It was a very strange dream because it didn't make sense to me. You have to look at the map. I don't understand. Ivy. I can smell burning. They're scared. So scared. The map. You have to look at the map. You have to look at the map. These are the true stories of real cases and the psychics who help investigators solve their most baffling mysteries. About 2.30 in the morning, there was a huge explosion. And I immediately went out towards where the explosion was to find out what happened. The closer I got, the more deafening the roaring noise became. When I first got there, the heat was tremendous. The paint peeled off of my police car. My emergency lights on top of my roof melted. Everything was on fire. House trailers, every car in that area was on fire. The trees above you. There was a house that uh, a lady lived in, and it was totally engulfed in flames. It was a tremendous blaze. So I have never seen anything like this in my life. Every available fire truck, every available ambulance, every available emergency medical personnel rushed to the scene. We just didn't really understand what had happened yet. Uh, there was a lot of confusion. Relatives and friends uh, had no idea whether their loved ones were injured or not. Firefighters determine the cause of the blaze is a gas pipeline explosion. Houston is a city of gas pipelines and, uh, and petrochemical plants, but an explosion like that doesn't happen every day. The only way to stop the fire, turn off the valves. Those valves for that particular line were 20 miles away in either direction. And those valves would have to be shut down and the remaining gas between those two valves would have to be burned off. So that took quite a bit of time. It takes firefighters all night to control the inferno. The assessment the next day is shattering. Next day when the count was made, there were five people dead, 43 people injured. There was a house on location that had been totally disintegrated, which was the area immediately adjacent to the pipeline. But one person remains unaccounted for. We found that one person that was missing, and that was Mrs. Ivy Beasley. Aunt Ivy lived on about 10 acres in Pearland in a small house. She had three dogs that served as her burglar alarm. She taught first and second grade to illiterate prisoners in the Texas state prison system. A very spirited, enjoyable lady. The pipeline that exploded had been on Ivy's property. Fire investigators immediately start looking for the missing woman. Good morning, Patricia. If y'all can kind of go to the right over here and start searching that area. Once we found out that there was at least one person missing, we tried to start doing a systematic search of the entire property. The persons that were involved in the search were having to do very tedious work, and uh, it was very hot. Uh, and a lot of the ground, a lot of the items were still hot for a day or two after the uh, fire had even been put out. Every rock, every stone, every piece of debris had to be moved and looked at. He's looking for any kind of evidence. We conducted a search both inside and outside and around the perimeter of the home. We were unable to locate any evidence that showed that she may have even been here that day. Ivy Beasley is nowhere to be found. They not only could not find her, but her house was leveled. And uh, so that was the mystery of the case. Nobody knew wh what had happened. Until the mystery is solved, investigators must consider whether Beasley's disappearance could be the result of foul play. The investigators couldn't find any indication of Aunt Ivy. We had no idea what had happened to her. The family was coming unglued about it. They were very, very upset. 
Hi, how are you? Brenda Hayes, a psychotherapist in New Jersey, arranges an informal meeting with a client that will change both their lives. Having this dream. Elizabeth had had a rather disturbing dream and wanted to discuss it. It's a dream I've been having every single night. And it's scaring me. I, I think I'm going I got so frightened by it because it wouldn't stop. And there's something evolving about the information. See if we can try to understand what it is that you're trying to say to yourself. What is it that you're dreaming? I can just close my eyes and, and see the picture. I see oil wells and I see a trailer park and in the middle of that is this little house. There's a house, a small house. I don't recognize it. And a woman. She's all alone. I don't understand. There's a fence on one side of the house. Green, covered in green. It's ivy. Ivy is all over the house. I can see this woman. Your aunt in Texas. Your aunt. An explosion, a fire, I can smell burning. I keep hearing this message, your aunt, Houston, Texas. I, I think I'm going crazy. Well, it's very strange because my aunt lived in Concord, New Hampshire, not Houston, Texas. So I was confused by the dream. Brenda Hayes can't believe what she's hearing. When Elizabeth began to describe the dream with the house and the trailer park, and the ivy on the house. There's lots of ivy around the house. Elizabeth didn't understand what the dream was about, but I knew immediately she was talking about my aunt, Aunt Ivy, that it was about the explosion. And she is missing. We don't know where she is. We don't know anything about her status. This isn't the first time Elizabeth Joyce has had unexpected premonitions she can't explain. I didn't know I was being psychic. Uh, I would get these impressions either through a feeling, through a dream, sometimes through a vision. Somebody may be coming to harm or has come to harm. I see an explosion. I found that sometimes I was an open channel, but I was not a professional psychic at this point. As she talked about it, I felt that perhaps she could help us in understanding exactly what had happened to my aunt. Can an unwitting psychic help solve the disappearance of Ivy Beasley? In what seems like a bizarre coincidence, Elizabeth Joyce has identified a woman in her dream as Ivy Beasley. Beasley is missing after a fire destroyed her home in Pearland, Texas. Investigators are considering foul play. At that point, we didn't know if someone may have actually gone after Mrs. Beasley. She was the only one that was missing during the entire whole event. And we, have, we had accounted for every other person on the, on the property. But we didn't know if there was some kind of criminal activity that occurred, or did someone actually sabotage the pipeline, if there was arson involved. After thorough investigation, police determined that the pipeline had not been tampered with. The fire was an accident. But Beasley's disappearance still isn't explained and foul play has not been ruled out. I was increasingly upset that they had not found any evidence whether Aunt Ivy was alive or dead. Hayes contacts an old friend in Texas for help. Hello, Brenda, how are you? I ask my friend David McConnell, who was a fireman, to be my representative. I was pretty much back in my role as a fire investigator. After my telephone conversation with Brenda and met some of the sheriff's deputies and uh, asked them what they thought had happened. Hi, Dave McConnell. Welcome, Steve. I'm back to meet you, sir. Sorry. Let me bring you up to speed as to what we've gotten so far. We've got a rough uh, rendering of a man. I remember all kinds of scenarios being played out to figure out what was happening to Mrs. Beasley. In investigating an incident like this, you're going to look into the possibility of sabotage, foul play, uh, intent to do harm to someone. Her house is destroyed. She's disappeared. Uh, does she have an enemy that would go to that extent to, uh, to harm her? 
There is one possibility that must be considered. Beasley's work at a local prison could somehow have made her a target for attack. We knew that Ivy Beasley worked at a correctional facility about 50 miles from her home, taught there every day, and sometimes, for various reasons, she would stay in the area. We did look at the, uh, at the prisoners that Ivy taught to determine if anyone had a problem with Ivy or she had a problem with any one of them, and it might have led to them wanting to hurt her. McConnell questions prison officials, hoping for a lead. Well, we came to the correctional center, and we checked it out. It was, it was pretty well determined that, that Ivy didn't have any any enemies, anyone that would want to hurt her. So we were pretty much at a dead end. Without any leads to pursue, investigators search the property again for any sign of Ivy Beasley. It was a good possibility that the fire being such great intensity and great heat that the remains could have been totally incinerated. So we had to take very good, very detailed parts and trying to investigate, trying to sift through uh, all this ash and just yards and yards of dirt, trying to find any remains that possibly could have been there. During the search, something catches their eye. We actually came across some remains, and uh, uh, there was high hopes that this was the, uh, the bones of uh, Mrs. Beasley. Have investigators finally cracked the case? They send the bones to the lab for analysis. While police wait for the lab results, Brenda Hayes turns to Elizabeth Joyce and her strange recurring dream. I called Elizabeth because the investigators couldn't find any indication of Aunt Ivy. They haven't been able to find her. Do you have any idea where she might be? I was not a professional psychic at this point, and I could not believe that I was capable of doing such a thing. I can try to go back into the dream. I would get impressions, but not know what they were, and I couldn't control them. Although she's dubious about her psychic abilities, Joyce agrees to see what she can do. I'm in the dream, and I'm scanning the house. I can see that woman again. The dogs are barking like crazy. Something's not right. She's going downstairs. Talk to me, Ivy. What's going on? What happened to you? There's a quiet hissing like gas, and I can smell burning. She's inside the house, but I still feel that something's not right. Something's not where it should be. I see her leaving. She's going outside. She's looking for something. What is it, Ivy? Where are you? Whistling. I hear whistling. She's outside and I can hear this sound, like a kettle whistle, but it's getting louder and louder. The noise, it's deafening. Burning, everything is burning. The flames are everywhere. She wasn't in the house, Brenda. I'm sure of it. I hope that helps. I was relieved in one sense because I believed that her dreams could be very, very accurate. I wasn't around. We were hopeful that she had left, that she hadn't been at home. But Elizabeth Joyce's impressions have only deepened the mystery. If Ivy Beasley wasn't in the house during the fire, where was she and where is she now? In the search for Ivy Beasley, investigators have found shards of bone among the ashes. Once those bones were located, uh, there was high hopes of everyone that, that this was going to be the conclusion of the investigation. However, the bones end up being canine and not Mrs. Beasley's.
The longer it was unsettled, the more distressed I was becoming. Brenda Hayes consults Elizabeth Joyce one more time. I brought you a picture of Aunt Ivy. It's been almost a week. I thought maybe it would help you get some further information about her. To her surprise, Joyce finds that the photo triggers another series of impressions. Ivy. Talk to me, Ivy. Where are you? I can see her. I can see her and she's outside her house. It's night and I'm outside. She's lost something. She's wandering around looking for something. There are some oil wells to my left. On the other side is a trailer park. Lots of trailers. She's close to them. There's a strange noise. She's scared. She doesn't know what that noise is. She starts running. Running away. There's tall grass all around her. She's next to a fence. I, I believe that, that she was running away from the house and was blown from the explosion into this tall grass. And it's almost like she's telling me what was going on. Let me draw it for you. The impression is coming in very, very direct. Here's the little house, and here's the oil wells. And I feel a trailer park over here with lots of trailers. Ask them to go about five or 600 feet beyond the property limit. Because she's in the tall grass. You have to look over here. She drew a map that was very accurate. I was very hopeful that the sketch would point the investigators in the right direction. And I decided that I needed to get this information to David as quickly as possible. And I pretty quickly contacted the investigators. They were somewhat skeptical. But the response was, well, we've tried everything else. Let's give this a shot. We'll go look. Can a psychic's cryptic map help find Ivy Beasley in time? I can see it pretty clearly. Elizabeth Joyce has drawn a map she believes will lead to Ivy Beasley. Based on this map that was uh, provided to us, we were actually going to be conducting a search in an area that hadn't been looked at at all, uh, almost opposite of where we had been searching all this time. You'll take that area right over there and go that direction, and we'll let you go search down this way and go on the other side of the fence. Approximately uh, an hour and a half, two hours into the search pattern, we were able to find an article of clothing, which I believe was a shoe. Well, I can find a shoe over here. We found a shoe located on the fence that was on the map. And then we went through that fence. And on the other side, we were able to find a, a body. My memory serves me, it was probably 450 to 500 feet uh, behind and off to the side of the house. The remains are identified as belonging to Ivy Beasley. It was pretty astonishing, the fact that uh, it was some 500 feet away from where her home was. There was no real reason to believe that she would have gone that far. Uh, uh, if she lived, she would have come out the other side somewhere. Uh, if she'd been blown up in the explosion, she wouldn't have flown that far. The eventual theory was that she, in a state of shock, took off running and was terribly burned. Uh, the map depicted almost exactly where the body was. 
Elizabeth Joyce entered uncharted territory for the first time, but it wouldn't be the last. The dream had ended, and I realized that I had been given a great gift, and now I could finally learn how to use it. I was very thankful that Elizabeth had been able to help, and also that she had the validation. Wow, what a bizarre story, and it's true. Did it make me a believer in the possibility of psychic phenomenon? Yes, yes it did.